there's a protein percentage that separates the ranchers making profit from the ones barely breaking even in cattle fattening, and I'm about to tell you exactly what it is. But first, quick question. Do you know your current protein level in your beef cattle feed? Because I just spent two weeks analyzing feedlot data from over 12,000 head, and I found something that honestly shocked me. 97% of operations are in this range, but the top 3%, the ones with the fastest fattening rates and best margins, they're all hitting this one specific number. And when I say changes everything, I mean same cattle, same timeline, but 400 pounds more market weight. The number is 14%. 14% crude protein. That's the magic threshold that turns average gains into explosive growth during the finishing phase. But here's where it gets interesting. And stay with me, because this is where most ranchers lose thousands of dollars without even knowing it. It's not just about hitting 14%. It's about when you hit it, how you balance it, and what you combine it with. Because I've seen operations feeding 16% protein and getting worse results than those at 12. Sounds impossible, right? Let me explain why this happens. Your beef cattle don't just need protein. They need the right protein at the right stage with the right energy balance. Think of it like building a house. You can have the best bricks in the world, but without the proper foundation and structure, that house is coming down. Protein is your brick, energy is your foundation, and timing is your blueprint. Miss any of these three, and you're literally watching your investment walk around the pasture going nowhere. Now, let me break down what happens inside your cattle when they hit that 14% sweet spot during the finishing phase, which typically starts around 700 to 800 pounds. At this weight, your animals are transitioning from skeletal growth to serious muscle and fat deposition. This is where the money is made, my friend. Their metabolic demand for amino acids skyrockets because they're building muscle tissue at maximum capacity. Feed them less than 12% and you're starving that growth potential. Feed them more than 16% and here's what most people don't realize, you're wasting money because cattle can't store excess protein. They convert it to energy, which is the most expensive energy source you could possibly buy. But wait, there's something even more critical that 90% of ranchers miss completely. Are you making this mistake right now? The protein number on your feed tag, that's crude protein. It tells you nothing about digestibility or amino acid profile. You could be feeding 14% protein that's only 60% digestible, which means you're actually delivering around 8.5% usable protein. This is why I see ranchers scratching their heads, wondering why their gains are flat despite using premium feed. The devil is in the details. Let me give you a real example. Two ranchers, both in Texas, both finishing Angus Cross steers. Ranch A feeds 16% crude protein from primarily cottonseed meal. Ranch B feeds 14% from a blend of soybean meal and distiller's grains. After 120 days, Ranch A averaged 2.1 pounds daily gain. Ranch B, 3.2 pounds daily. Same genetics, similar starting weights, but Ranch B understood something crucial. Soybean meal delivers 85 to 90% digestible protein with a superior amino acid profile, especially lysine and methionine, the two limiting amino acids in cattle growth. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I'll just switch to soybean meal and hit 14%. Hold on, because there's another piece of this puzzle that changes everything. And if you miss this, you'll still lose money. Energy to protein ratio. This is the secret sauce that separates good results from extraordinary results. Your cattle need approximately 6 to 7 units of energy, measured in total digestible nutrients, or TDN, for every 1 unit of protein during finishing. At 14% protein, you should be looking at around 82 to 86% TDN. Why does this matter so much? Picture your steer's rumen as a factory. Protein provides the workers, the microbes that break down feed. Energy provides the fuel and raw materials. Too many workers without enough fuel and they're standing around doing nothing, that's expensive. Too much fuel without enough workers and it piles up unprocessed, that's inefficient gain. The magic happens when they're perfectly balanced. 
This is when you see those explosive three to four pound daily gains that make finishing cattle incredibly profitable. Here's a mistake I see constantly, especially with smaller operations trying to save money. They'll mix their own rations using whatever's cheap and available locally. Corn, some hay, maybe throw in some supplement. They think they're hitting 14% protein because the calculator says so. But they're mixing high-quality protein sources with low-quality ones, and they're not accounting for the energy side. What happens? Inconsistent gains, longer finishing periods, and ultimately lower profit per head. Time is money in cattle feeding. Every extra week to finish is another week of feed costs, labor, and opportunity cost. Let me give you the framework that top producers use. During the growing phase, from weaning to about 700 pounds, you can get away with 11 to 13% protein if your forage quality is decent. But once you enter finishing, you need to bump to 14%, and this is critical, from highly digestible sources. Your base should be quality grains like corn or barley for energy. Then add protein from soybean meal, canola meal, or quality distiller's grains. Avoid relying heavily on urea or other non-protein nitrogen sources during finishing. They're great for maintenance and early growth, but they don't deliver the amino acid profile needed for maximum muscle deposition. Now, how do you know if you're in the zone? Watch these three indicators like a hawk. First, daily weight gains. At 14% balanced protein with proper energy, you should see 2.8 to 3.5 pounds daily during peak finishing. Second, feed conversion. You want around 5.5 to 6.5 pounds of feed per pound of gain. Any higher, and something's off in your nutrition. Third, body condition and finish. Your cattle should be laying down back fat smoothly and consistently, not getting pot-bellied or showing uneven fat distribution. And here's something that'll save you headaches. Test your feed. Don't just trust the tag. Spend the $50 to $75 per sample to get a proper nutritional analysis. I've seen feed that claimed 14% test at 11.8%. That's a massive difference that costs you real money. Also, test your forage if you're including hay or silage. That good quality hay might be 8% protein or it might be 14%. You don't know until you test it. Let's talk about water for a second because this ties directly into protein utilization. Cattle consuming high protein need significantly more water, approximately one gallon per pound of dry matter intake, sometimes more in hot weather. Inadequate water restricts feed intake, which means all that carefully balanced 14% protein ration doesn't matter if they're not eating enough of it. Make sure you have clean, accessible water at all times. This sounds basic, but I've walked onto operations where water access was the limiting factor destroying their finishing program. One more advanced concept for those of you really wanting to optimize. Consider protected proteins or bypass proteins for your highest performing genetics. These are proteins that escape room and degradation and get absorbed in the small intestine. They're more expensive, yes, but for high value cattle with superior genetics, the additional gain can justify the cost. You might go from 14% total crude protein to 12%, with 3% being bypass protein. This delivers amino acids directly where they're needed most. So, what's your action plan starting today? First, know your current protein level, real digestible protein, not just the number on the tag. Second, match your protein to your cattle stage, 14% for finishing cattle, over 700 pounds. Third, balance with energy at that 6 to 1 or 7 to 1 ratio. Fourth, use high-quality digestible protein sources. Fifth, test everything, your feed, your forage, and track your results religiously. The ranchers making serious money in cattle finishing aren't guessing. They're measuring, adjusting, and optimizing constantly. That 14% protein level isn't magic by itself. It's magic when it's the right kind, at the right time, with the right balance. This is what separates profit from barely breaking even. If this information just changed how you think about feeding your beef cattle, do me a favor. Subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now, because we're here every single week breaking down the real science and practical strategies that put more money in your pocket. Drop a comment below telling me what your current protein level is and what results you're seeing. Let's learn from each other. 
and share this with another rancher who needs to hear this message. We're building a community of producers who refuse to accept average results. Let's grow together, let's profit together, and let's raise the best beef cattle possible. I'll see you in the next one.